Listen to this. I'm not going to downgrade my lifestyle because me and you are no longer together. And I just feel like if you <gasps> put me what? in this space and that was under your budget then, what's the difference now? You not He's his not girlfriend together. anymore. He not popping you. But see, what he did was this, though. He gave you the upgrade. But part of that upgrade is because you're with me. Yeah. You understand? So, so let me just go, though. So we didn't work out me and you dating. You feel me? So I'm supposed to keep paying your loft and keep paying your bins. No, you on your own now. Instead of sitting there taking gifts, you should have been building your business. Upgrade it, stay with me. If not, go see what's out there. Oh, so then that. So then if that's the case, so yeah. you want me to stay with you for these items and use you. No. For them. If you well, want to live like this, it comes with being with me. Income. Right. When he leaves, Simple the lifestyle logic. leaves too. My current new lifestyle that you upgraded me to is now contingent on me being in a relationship with you. And that's the only way I can have it in this moment. Yes. Because yep. <laughs> why would he provide for someone that he has no ties with? <laughs> You want him to keep your lifestyle up, keep paying your bills, keep you on that same upgraded level. No, you were dating a man that had money, so dating him came with a lifestyle. But if we not working and our love is dead, I don't owe you to keep paying your, your car note and your mortgage. Entitled. I'm not entitled to. now. Right, you should have gotten up and did something for yourself so that you could be able to keep that same lifestyle up for yourself just in case something do happen. Even if you don't, we're not together. You should, why don't you have a job? What are you thinking? That where is he? Where is this entitlement coming from? I mean, you just never know. No, listen, that isn't really my job. You should find <laughs> you a man like me and upgrade to him and, and keep your but lifestyle. But that takes that takes time. So I just feel exactly. like if someone had me on a certain pedestal, you're not just because I we no longer working. You're not just gonna rip the pedestal from me. Nobody owes you. Sh Girl, shut up. You owe yourself everything. Girl, shut up. This should be a lesson learned that you need to get up and do something for yourself so that you can provide that lifestyle for yourself. That way, nobody can ever take that shit away. And stop keep it talking, y'all. Y'all know I always keep it real. But I'm not going to lie to you. I done seen so many videos about that girl that's 106 people. And that's why I always say body counts do matter to me. I'm not about to fuck you. It only three people my whole life. And you the 20, 15, 30. And it, that's disgusting. Not only are you flop, swapping fluids, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a health concern, that's spiritually as well. Y'all mm -hmm. wonder why y'all so miserable, so angry, can't get nowhere in life because you got all these spirits attached. And it's kind of alarming to know that y'all just go into bed and just sleep with anybody. I mean, they, I don't believe in bed bugs, STDs, nothing. You just invite anybody over to your house and get in your bed. And I just want to say, what's the thrill out of it? Because if you're sleeping around with that many people, none, now one of them has piqued your interest to settle down or marry them. And that's why body counts matter to me. Because what's the point? Why would I settle down with you and you didn't have the city? That's disgusting. So y'all, some of y'all that's going to get in the comments, well, I'm safe with it. Be safe with it. Because ain't no way in the I respect myself too much. Ain't no way in the to hop in the bed with multiple people and give the, give away my body to them that's that's just that's that's unrealistic to me i cannot see myself doing it i don't give a fuck. it only takes one time to catch some shit you can't get rid of and that's why a lot of y'all work walking around with the herpes now and can't get rid of i never had an std in my life and thank god and i think the reason why is because first of all before we fuck, go get tested together and then i just don't fuck everybody i may flirt baby sometimes i just be with oh. play because y'all mother itching and scratching and having some shit you cannot get rid of and listen man as a dude i get it you want to get out there and knock something down and it takes a while for you to be like eh, i don't need that but at some point in time i would encourage you to look at something and weigh the pros and cons man by going out here and doing this i could take this time or this money or whatever it is and put it over here and build my empire that's the way you got to start looking at it and add to yourself instead of other people add to the one that's going to add to you dude I don't want this. I see why you men want to go 50 50 with women now. Long story short, my man got a new phone because he broke his phone and he bought a new one. He had a 12 Pro Max and I said, hey, can I have the phone? He said, yeah, you can have it, but you got to get it fixed because the screen is broken. I said, okay, I'll go drop the phone off to get fixed. And then I decided to go get some lunch. And I'm like, hey, you want something? I'll pick up something for you. We done got two margaritas and uh, lunch and it's $70. I feel like it's a fair trade because I get a phone and I'm like, okay, but $70 for lunch? It but is. that's for two people keep in mind he does eat more than i eat my meal was probably like 24 dollars. but that every single day to have to keep up with you're eating a lot and then hey. somebody else is eating on top of that is a lot of funny it is and then on top of that to be paying somebody whole rent of course yo i want to go 50 50. i quite literally want to ask him to send me half for this <laughs> meal but i'm not gonna do that because you know i want to you know give back because he always giving me stuff man is this how y'all been feeling all this time this is how i feel about the 50 50 situation i'm okay with going and the thing is, a lot of men don't care about taking care of you. They just want to be appreciated for it. Imagine that. What's the craziest thing you've done? Bit of a long one. In the summer of 2022, I was doing this thing where I was trying to force myself. Bit of a long one here. This woman is about to um, 
get absolutely played. I have to go out and do things by myself. One of the things that I decided to do was go to a concert by myself here in LA. And I went to see this musician. At the time, I only knew like one or two of his songs. But by the end of the show, I had developed a cute little crush. My impression was so substantial cute that I actually went to San Diego to see his next show the following weekend. And this time I actually stayed afterward to hopefully try to meet him. In my brain, I really built this up, this interaction up, because when he came out, I felt like I was, you know, behind quite a few girls, but I felt like he saw me pretty quickly and made his way to me. He also told me that he felt like my energy was really good and he could see me from the stage and we took a picture together and I, he shouldn't have said any of that because now I'm going to engage my psychopathic self. Yep. He continues on doing his tour, but he ends up back in Los Angeles when he's done. Let's say it's around September. Understand that he's a musician and he is already, as a musician, playing with house money. September at this time, I decide, hey, I'm going to put on a swimsuit and head over to Malibu. Again, still in my era of doing things by myself, but I did, I swear to this day, I already had the plan to go to Malibu. However, I then saw on his did. story that he was in Malibu. So I just shot my shot, I tried to DM him, but he's a big okay. enough artist that he wasn't really seeing any of my DMs. So I go on TikTok and I see that he is actively interacting with like a trend where people are singing along to his song sped up. And then it's that thing where like the words drop out. And if you're a real fan, you can keep singing the song and not miss a lyric. When I say he's like actively participating in it, I'm seeing him duet a bunch of people. And the most recent was like within two minutes of me saying this. So I'm sitting in a parking lot in Malibu and I decide to do this trend. But on the screen, I'm basically telling him like, hey, I'm also in Malibu. If you want to hang out, right he now. sees the video and he likes the video, but he doesn't say anything. So I reply pretty quickly. I at him and say, don't just leave me on red, like go check your DM. Jesus. So next thing I know, I'm getting notifications on Instagram that he is liking my recent messages. So finally, he's seeing my stories. He's also watching all of my Instagram stories, but he's not saying anything to me. He's not saying anything about meeting up or anything like that. I do my own thing. I go to the beach. I read my book. Everything I'm posting, he is watching. And I periodically message him just like kind of goofing around and teasing him about like hanging out with me. And anytime I do this, he is liking the message, but he's not saying anything to me. My time at the beach ends. I'm getting ready You're to leave. Vetted. I send a final message where I'm just like, hey, I'm heading out unless you have like a last minute, you know, change of heart. You're being vetted right now. Can I trust you? Because you're about to get knocked down. And you want to be up. But if not, like, this has been exciting. Even just you interacting with me has been kind of fun. And I go on my way. I'm driving up the highway. And I see that he DMs me. I nearly have a panic attack. I, like, want to pull over. But I'm on the Malibu Highway. I'm on the PCH. And I look at it. And I see mobile, question mark. Like, he's asking for my number. But I don't know if he unsent it or if I made it disappear because I accidentally in my excitement scrolled up into the vanish mode thing. And when I came back, it was gone. So I don't know if he unsent it. He probably did. But I decided to say, like, in case you change your mind, here's my phone number. And I gave him my phone number. He likes the message and that's it. And nothing happens. And I don't see him or hear from him for three weeks. What's okay. hilarious is that three weeks later, I'm at a business meeting in downtown Los Angeles. I've told one of my coworkers about this and we just think it's kind of funny. I told a couple of the coworkers that were there. And as we're leaving, we're going to go to like a business dinner. I'm skipping out. We're waiting for our Uber. And I'm literally singing one of his songs. And I get a text from an unknown number that literally stops me mid-skip. And my jaw is on the floor. He doesn't say who he is or anything like that. But I just like knew. I just knew in that moment. That's who it was. And I look at my coworker and I, I just go, oh my God. And she was like, did he text you or something? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was like, I just need to calm down. Because like, it might not even be him. I don't know. But I think so. We go to this dinner and we're with... Um, like a consulting group that we were meeting downtown. A lot of people I don't really know, but he then calls me. I'm freaking out. People around me know what's going on. It became this big thing where they're teasing me, very unprofessional for me to have even been like talking about it or freaking out about it at a business dinner. But I step away and I answer the call and sure enough, it, it's his voice. And he has a very distinct voice. Um, he has a vision yeah, very obviously him. And I am trying so hard to be like calm, cool, and collected. This artist um, portrays himself as this like emotional guy. He sings a lot of sad songs. He, you know, like, a character. It's kind of dorky. This is how he presents himself. So I was a little bit thrown off that very quickly it turned spicy and he was requesting to be referred to as daddy. I'm thrown uh -huh. off, but I'm also just on like such a high that I've finally gotten this man's attention, which is a little bit pathetic of me, but I'm down to like see this through. So we're talking about meeting up to hang out. I tell him like- What you're hearing right now is she's about to paint herself in a certain light to be the victim. Realize once again, this man is playing with house money. Oh, I have this show that I'm going to tonight, but maybe tomorrow or another time this week, like just let me know what works for you. We set on a day of time. I fully get ready. I put on like a little fashion show for my friends. They help me like pick out an outfit and I do my hair, do my makeup. I'm ready to go out the door and he calls me. Once again, this guy, it's just important to know that his personality, the way he presents himself, like he has this goofier kind of way of carrying himself and he looks so easygoing and sweet, emotional, but he's talking to me like he drops his voice to the sultry tone. That's he's what they say. Voice, he's insisting on this like daddy talk, which you know what? I'm not against it as a whole, but like only if you are daddy. And this guy I know. just isn't to me. In this no, conversation, he though, is. he basically makes it very clear that he is expecting for me to do things for him and for nothing to be reciprocated whatsoever. I was hoping, like, can we chat? Can we have, like, a drink? Like, can we just... And I no. tell him, like, listen, I'm not delusional. Like, I know you're on tour. I'm not expecting to date you. 
but I was expecting like just like a normal sort of hookup situation, not like mm. this weird one-sided thing. He essentially tells me he realizes I'm not like that kind of girl and he's having second thoughts and I'm freaking out because I'm like, I don't want him to like not hang out with me. Um, I'm trying to convince him like, oh, don't change your mind. Just like, can't we just, you know, hang out? I don't know. But he's like, let me think about it. I'll call you back. He calls me back and he calls it off. I'm really disappointed, but I'm also left with like this kind of bad taste about him because just the image I had of him was totally shattered in that moment. It ain't bad um, enough. But at the end, there is a lot more to this story. It continues to today in 2024. So I'll do a part two. Okay, part two. So we left off where- He's playing the game at the him, highest like, level. Oh, you're really like not that kind of girl like I thought. I don't think it's a good idea. And so he called it off. But to make me feel better, he's like, we can hang out, you know, before I go, we'll go to like Joe and the Juice. And I'm thinking oh, yeah. like, he's not going to do that. But after we got off the phone, he texted oh, yeah. me and basically confirmed that. He's like, okay, so Joe and the Juice this week. A day or two passes and he does text me like, hey, but like I said, I kind of have this like bad taste in my mouth and I don't text him right away. And when I do finally text him, he doesn't ever reply to me. And then I see that he's traveling to Europe to continue that leg of his. What she's trying to do is regain some of the power that she feels that she lost. Fortunately, with a guy like this, he's a musician. So he's probably got somebody waiting in the wings that he can knock it out and you can be a long term play if you need to be. That's unfortunate. So I'm disappointed, but I just kind of accept it for what it is. It was fun while it lasted and I carried on with my life. But then I get a text from a international number and I had a pretty good hunch that it was him and it was. So he does text me every now and then. He's trying to have like spicy conversations with me. He tries to call me a couple of times. Sometimes I answer. I rarely do. One of the times I answered, he was trying to get me to like talk spicy to him. And I was like, bro, it's 9 a.m. for me. And I'm like getting ready for work. I'm about to go to my car to drive into the office. I hear and he's like, you. it's fine, it's fine. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like, I'm just not doing this right now. Um, right and now. he's like, all right, that's fine, bye. He hangs up, I text him. It's so weird, because it's like, you are not really enjoying what's happening, but you still want them to like, Girl. like you, or to still interact with you, which Come. is like pathetic to say that. But I text him after, I'm like, please don't be mad at me. He's like, it's fine, ha ha ha, whatever. So over the next literal year, yeah, we are interacting not often. It's periodic, he'll just send me a text. He keeps coming in and out of LA every now and then. And whenever he's in LA, I know he's gonna text me. I'm just like waiting for it. And sure enough, he always does. But I rarely text him back, because I'm just like not sure what he wants from me, or I, I know what he wants from me, but I'm not sure that I want to like give him that. What would usually not happen yet. is that he would text me and I would reply later, like an hour later or a day later. And then he would just not respond to me ever again. It's like, if I didn't respond right away, then the offer expired to interact with him. And he would just like not talk to me. I was like, okay. And that just continued over and over again. Sometimes he would call me and I wouldn't answer. And he'd text me and be like, hey, I just called you. And I'd be like, oh, sorry, like I was busy. I can talk now, but then silence. It was a very weird cycle that continued again for like about a year. So fast forward to the fall of 2023, about six months ago, he's back in the US touring again. And I decide I'm going to go see him again. Bear in mind, even when we're not texting, if I respond to a story on his Instagram, he usually will see it. He will usually like it. The frequency with which he does that today is a lot less. But like and what are you doing that for? Because you're trying to maneuver and put him in the position. You don't understand you're already cooked. It still happens every now and then. And I, I DM him saying that I'm going to the LA show. So he knows I'm going. He does see him like that message. I go with my friend. Nothing happens. We don't stay to try to see him after or anything. My friend and I actually go to karaoke after the show and I sing one of his songs. I tag him and he like sees it and likes that video too. The next stop on his tour is San Francisco. So I'm going to give you a bit of like really random context, but I swear it's relevant and I'll be quick. Around this time, I had accidentally flooded my kitchen and dining area. Yep. So fortunately, I have renter's insurance and they paid to have movers come and take out all of my belongings. It was as if I fully moved out of my apartment. That's and good. then my landlords had to work with a contractor to fix the damage and refinish my floors. So uh, my apartment's completely empty. I'm sitting on the floor of my living room and I'm about to go check into the hotel that they put me in and then immediately pack again to drive home to Sacramento. Because even though I had the hotel, I was like, I might as well use this chance to just go spend some time with my family in Sacramento. As I'm sitting on the living room floor, again, I had just finished going to the LA show, didn't see him. But I had DM'd him and I was like, ooh, should I go to your San Francisco show? And he did like that message. For what? So I'm again sitting on the floor and my phone rings and it's an international number. In this moment, I made a choice, okay? In my head, I'm thinking, I'm already shocked that he has continued to even try to talk to me over the last <laughs> year, but there's no way he's gonna keep doing that if I keep dodging him, if I keep you know, delaying getting back to him, if I don't answer his phone calls. So I made a decision in that moment. I was like, I'm going to answer this call and I'm going to be a- Girl, you made that decision like a year or so ago when y'all first started this. Exactly what he wants me to be. And so sure enough, I answered the phone. I'm not proud of this, but I- Exactly, no. And I am literally dying, okay? I'm like, I'm holding the phone, like on speaker. And then I would say something like, you're nervous. to like stifle my laughter. I'm dying laughing. You're laughing because you're nervous. And this is not something that you usually do. As I'm saying this stuff, cause it's so not like me, but I'm giving him everything. Exactly. He's like, when you stole me on the stage, like how bad did exactly. you want me? And then he asked me, like, would you really come to San Francisco? Um, I'd like love to see you. The show sold out, but I can get you on the guest list. And again, I'm like, we just need to send it, like do it for the plot. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go. To be clear, I don't think I would have gone out of my way to San Francisco just for this. But again, I was already planning to wake up the next day and go to Sacramento. So it's a bit of a detour, but I was like, I'll just take a little detour. And that's what I do. I get to my hotel, I unpack, it's now late at night. Then I repack and wake up at the butt crack of dawn the next day to hit the road so that I could get to San Francisco from LA by two o'clock. He wanted me to meet him at his hotel at two o'clock before his show. 
I took too long to get ready. So when I tell you, I was like boring it on the freeway because I needed to make up time. My ETA when I left was getting me to the hotel exactly at two, but like, hi, I need to stop for gas. I need to get some food. So I needed to make up some time. And I'm very impressed because I did <laughs> make up a lot of time. I got there like with perfect timing. Man, Throughout my you drive, cooked. he's also like texting to check in every now and then to see where I'm at. He sends me the address to his hotel and he calls me a couple times. Each time I have to turn on this like, daddy, <laughs> I'm really not proud of this. Um, I had to turn that on, you know? And he would also like get randomly really paranoid Cooked. and be like, is there someone in the background? And I'm like dead alone, but he's like, is there someone in the background? Like you're alone, right? Like he was very paranoid about that, which is funny because I'm like talking about it right now. But you know, that first call I was like, I work in HR, I know about discretion, you know, I'll sign an NDA, but you never made me sign an NDA, so. I don't want this video to go too much Ooh. past seven minutes. So I'm going to stop this one here. And then in part three, I'll tell you guys, and I'll try to make it right now, but I'll tell you guys about like what happened and where we're at now. He said okay, an so we're NDA now at the part where I'm pulling up to this hotel in San Francisco. Cooked. I get into the lobby, I text him, I'm like, I'm here. He's like, I'm in the lobby, I don't see you. And then he realizes he gave me the wrong address. Fortunately, his hotel was not that far. It was up a couple of blocks. And because San Francisco sucks to park in, I just decided to like walk over there which was like quite a bit of a hike. It probably took me like 15 minutes. And I had to walk by all these like homeless people. One guy literally pissing on the sidewalk right in front of me. But I get there, the plot, he me right. lobby, gives me a hug. We make some small talk. It's very casual. Like it doesn't feel, I don't feel like this crazy starstruck feeling. I feel like I'm just meeting up with a guy. We walk to the oh, elevator man. and some people are walking out of it. We get in, it's just the two of us. And it's like a small dark elevator. It's kind of like art deco looking. As soon as the elevator doors close, um, we he's like, come here. And we start making out. And I'm gonna be honest, it was very hot. I still think I know. That. <laughs> out of everything that happens in the story, that was the like main Life fun for part you. for me. I can't really obviously go into detail of what happened next, but I will say that it was essentially what he wanted, which was unfortunate for me, just <sighs> meaning that it was a one way situation. Like what I really did not like, this part really did rub me the wrong way, was that without asking, he pulled out his phone and took a video. And my face was very clearly in the shot. In the moment, I was like so caught up in what was happening that it disturbed me, but I didn't like say anything in that moment, but I really didn't like that. Um, there's not like much else to say about Hooked. this interaction, but I will say that it's like, it was a little degrading. I don't regret it. Of I did it for the plot. Not. Of that probably was a lot about me, but like to be clear. Of course not. Why would you regret it? You got to spend time. You got to give this man some sort of pleasure that he wanted. You got to be validated by him, even if it was a little degrading. I am really genuinely not like this. My body count is three. Right. And his body doesn't count as like the fourth because that didn't exactly happen. It was just like very evident that this man has like a kink for being worshipped. Even with the comment before of like, how bad did you want me on the stage? And I remember making like a comment about like, oh, all the girls were talking about you at the LA show and like how bad they wanted you, which wasn't true, but he loved hearing that, like of loved course. it. So it's it's like this weird juxtaposition with him of like, and I don't claim to know this man, obviously, but he was really nice to me afterward and a lot of the time leading up to of it. Of course um, he is. But then also was really into this like degrading sort of kink. So it, it was, it's weird. It's like those two things are in conflict. On the one hand, he's like this nice sensitive guy. On the it's other, he's not. got like this major ego thing going on. Anyways, I'm leaving. He tells me like, oh yeah, I gotta put you on the guest list. So that hadn't happened yet. And he also tells me to text him when I get to my car to make sure that I'm okay. Since we had just agreed that like San Francisco is not the cleanest, not the safest. Again, exhibiting some of those like nicer qualities. Oh, yeah. But as I'm leaving, I actually yeah. get distracted because there's like a little festival thing going on and I walk through it. So it takes me a minute to get to my car and he texts me. He's like, are you okay? Like, did you get to your car? I confirmed that I did. And he, you know, tells me like, that was a good time. Um, yeah. How was it for you? I tell him like it was all great. And this is where I tell him like the one thing I just didn't like was the videoing. Like I don't like knowing that someone has a video of me like that on their phone. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I would never do anything with that. Um, do you want me to delete it? And I was like, yeah, I think that that would make me feel all better. Right, and yeah, he's like, yeah, done. Yeah. Which I like never believe guys if they say something like that, but like whatever. So there's still a lot of time left before his show. I'm I'm like worried he's gonna forget to put me on the guest list because I'm thinking like, no, that what you want from me. Like I got you. Now. I carry on with my day. I get Korean I food. You. I get some coffee. I go to the Sutro bathrooms. I watch the sunset. I'm like having a great time in San Francisco. And now it's getting time to go to the venue. And I'm honestly contemplating just like going home because I'm like, he hasn't confirmed that I'm on the guest list, but I decided I'm gonna go. I'm gonna check. Nah, if I'm you. on it, great. If I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna go home. But as I'm driving to the venue, he does text me and he was like, hey, you're on the guest list. Like, text me. Are you here? I can get someone to come get you so you don't have to wait in line. It's the least I can do. I wasn't there yet. So I did text him once I got there, but he was preoccupied. So he did text me back. But he texted me right before the show started to be like, oops, sorry. Like, I just saw this. Um, hope you got in and everything. He had also previously told me that he might want to see me after the show, but it was his birthday. So he was like, they might have a cake for me. They might like do something. I might be tired. So like, it was sort of a up in the air sort of thing. I waited for 45 minutes after the show um, to see if he texted me to see if he like did want to hang out again. But I'm honestly like so dead tired. I had just moved out of my apartment, moved into a hotel, packed up, driven at the butt crack of dawn and gone through yeah. all of this, sat through another show. And I still have two hours to go to get to Sacramento that night. So around midnight, I sent him a text and I'm like, hey, I know you said you might want to hang out, but I'm really tired. I still need to drive to Sacramento. I'm sure you're busy. I'm sure you're tired. So I'm just going to head out. And he didn't text me that night. And I was like thinking he's either mad that I left or he's just like done with me and I'm not going to hear from him again. But he did text me the next day. Again, was like, that was fun. You know, he told me nice things. He told me I was like gorgeous. And he would say things like he wants to be oh, yeah. a girl. And he basically was yeah. like, I'll see you the next time I'm in LA. I'm riding this high for the next several weeks. And he does text me when he's back in LA. But I basically tell him like, can it be 
more this time like can it be a, a mutual thing this time and he basically is like no he's very clear that he just wants it to be this one way i do something for him and get nothing in return and i'm keeping my tone like lighthearted, but i'm just like oh like why won't you just you know do this and he gets like mad <laughs> he goes oh my god the drama now i can't with caught this. up and i'm just like wait <laughs> hold on are you mad that i want to properly hook up with you like a mutually beneficial just like no strings attached i'm not asking for your hand in marriage but i just respond like all right we're good which is like okay we're done and we kind of have been done um every now and then you know it's still that weird thing that's that weird dynamic where like i really didn't like a lot of these things a lot of these responses and some of these like more degrading moments i didn't like the video thing but he's also nice he's like blowing up even more and i know that like it doesn't actually matter like he's just a human being but there's kind of just that natural draw to people like that to being like known by someone that's known by so many you know like and it feels really pathetic to say that but i think that's not an uncommon perspective so all that to say like i still periodically dm him on instagram and he periodically likes it and he did since that last interaction we did talk about like hanging out again when he was in la but like then he left me you know he like said we would and then he didn't follow through with making a plan and now he's in he's abroad and i honestly don't know if when he comes back to la if he will try to talk to me i don't know if he'll ever talk to me again i just don't if you guys keep blowing these up and he realizes i'm talking about him he definitely won't ever talk to me again unless it's to get mad at me so you guys need to chill if you figure out one girl already to figure it out if you guys figure it out just like please be chill <laughs> i'm i'm not trying to like it's not like i'm worried i'm gonna compromise a relationship but like the weird relationship that you have exactly. i just like keep it like that you know but that's it that's my story thanks guys hope you enjoyed you're doing too much you got played he got exactly what he wanted and here you are still trying to catch his attention it's weird because it's conflicting it's not that's a character on stage that's what people do and he's doing that to the best of his knowledge and ability and you're falling right into it because you want so much validation from him you're driving all the way from wherever you were to Sa san francisco then you gotta you gotta go to sacramento why don't you want to hook up with me because the man knows and we're seeing with Fresh from Fresh and Fit exactly why he's not laying down with you. That's unfortunate. We'd like you to have a little bit more respect for yourself. You had a time with him. Go find somebody else, dude. Don't continue to do this. Don't continue to disrespect and degrade yourself for some other dude's validation that dude don't even want you. Come on, man. That's just my opinion. To the next video, I'm out.